This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star of today's show is the Spectre Carbon Racing Cockpit. The Spectre Carbon Racing Cockpit is an inexpensive and simple option that it can have you up and running in a matter of minutes with some basic tools. The Spectre Carbon is made of a special hardwood called Volcromat, which is a colored wood fiber panel or something similar to a dyed MDF. Meaning that that grayish color of the finish goes all the way through the wood. If you drill a new color, you're still going to see that color, unlike other types of hardwood that you might choose from. The Spectre Carbon is designed to accommodate drivers from 4 foot 10 through 6 foot 5 and is highly adjustable. The Spectre Carbon goes for $269.99 making it the least expensive full cockpit that I have ever tested. The Spectre Carbon comes to us from two brothers out of New York, both of which had woodworking experience. They took their love for sim racing, their woodworking experience, and they designed a rig that comes off a little bit like a DIY project or like many DIY designs that I've seen out there in the past. Now, in this case, they've taken the DIY or the trial and error elements out of the equation and they've simplified it by making it a kit form for you to put together yourself. This saves you from needing saws, drills, and other finishing materials. This created a purpose-built chassis with a bit of the DIY feel to it. And using their woodworking background, they designed the rig to be easy to assemble, easy to adjust, and easy to store away when not being used. The Spectre Carbon comes in two boxes. One, a large box with all the wood pieces flat packed into that one, and then a smaller box with all the hardware that you're gonna need to assemble the rig. Now, the rig is easy to build and it comes with very simple to follow instructions and it also comes with these really cool, I'm gonna call them wedge locks and they make assembly a breeze. In the end, you only need two 7 16th inch wrenches to complete the job. After we've laid out and identified all the pieces, we can start the build. And like any project, I would actually advise you to read the instructions from start to finish. Get acquainted with them before you start the build. It'll just make sure that you don't make any mistakes. And in this case, at the end of the instructions is a sharp chart showing you the different diagrams or the different dimensions or angles that you can install your deck, your pedals, and your seat angles. So you might want to check that first before you actually start the actual build. This might affect which holes you use when assembling the Spectre Carbon. Once we are ready to go, we start with the seat section of the rig. There's a seat back, a seat bottom, and two side panels. It is best to pre-mount the hardware into the mounting locations from the diagram and then hold two pieces together as we tighten down these wedge lock connectors. While they are loose, it's a little clumsy, but you can just set the hardware into the pre-cut slots and then tighten it down. I added the seat back and the seat bottom to one side and then installed the second side to complete the structure. Four pieces joined together and we have our seat box. Next up is the pedal box. Again, we pre-install the hardware into the holes we will be using and then join one of the sides to the pedal deck and then join the other side to the deck as well. The middle section is the wheel deck and we follow the same routine. Pre-install the hardware and then join one of the sides to the deck and then install the opposite side and that completes that section. During the assembly of those three sections, we determined our initial pedal angle, our wheel deck angle, and our seat recline angle. Now it's time to join them all together and that's when we're gonna determine the length or distances between our seat back and our pedals and our seat back and our wheel deck. And we do that by using the series of holes that allow the wheel deck section to join them all together. After you have set the right distance for the seat, you can use four bolts to hold the seat to the middle and then another four bolts to hold the pedals to the middle as well. If you haven't already, you can add the seat cushions and then finally the bat wings or side tables. The side tables just connect to each side of the Spectre Carbon two hardware sets to hold a deck to the side, and then another two pieces of hardware to hold the deck to the leg. Repeat for the opposite side, and we have dual decks for keyboard, mice, shifters, or whatever you desire. In the end, it only took me about 40 minutes to fully complete building the rig. 
Now the Spectre Carbon has a very low profile and with the bat wings removed, it's actually one of the smallest footprints of any rig that I've ever tested when set up with me. And it measures in at only 58 inches or 147 centimeters long by 23 inches or 58 and a half centimeters wide and only 23 inches or 58 and a half centimeters tall. At full length, for a driver of six foot five, it can be extended to a length of 71 inches or 180 centimeters long. Each side table, add another 12 and a half inches or almost 32 centimeters per side. And with both connected, our width grows to 46 inches or 117 centimeters total width. Even in its larger configurations, it's pretty small for how much is there. The wheel and pedal decks of the Spectre Carbon are both pre-drilled for all common gear. So your Logitech, Thrustmaster, Fanatic gear, you're all covered. It is gonna just bolt right to the rig. However, one thing I will note, most chassis out there are built with steel plates for the decking, the deck surfaces. In the case of the Spectre Carbon, it is a little bit thicker. It comes in at about a half an inch or 12 and a half millimeters thick. So it will take slightly longer bolts, but once I had the right bolts, two bolts later, my wheel was mounted and another two bolts later, the pedals were ready to go as well. The Spectre Carbon also came with a piece of housing for your wiring. I was gonna toss this aside at first and then decided to install it. It has a slit down the side so you can insert your wires into it and it gives it a little bit more of a finished look when completed. I just used a couple of Velcro straps to hold it down in place. So with all of our components mounted, we could get a good look at the Spectre Carbon in its form ready to race. And it has a very distinct and good look about it. It looks like a pro rig for sure. Despite being made of wood, it definitely doesn't look like your typical DIY and is a lot more elegant. It certainly is no Sean DIY certainly is no death mobile. It has a very low chassis and its seat sits all the way down about six or seven inches from the floor. Its overall shape reminds me of an amusement park ride, perhaps a bumper car or something. I like and appreciate the gentle curves that give it far more style than the current market of 90 degree angle rigs. It has that gray matte finish to it that is consistent through the chassis and you can see the bold silver bolt heads of how it's all put together. You can also see all of the adjustment holes not being used, but combined with the curves of the pieces and the overlapping shapes, it gives it an appealing look. The design has five different handholds to be able to move it around. Two on the front side and one on the back seat and two that also serve as a handhold for getting in and out of the chassis. On the back side, we can see our installed wedge lock hardware along with the Spectre logo engraved into the wood. The cushions are basic, a piece of heavy duty, meshy backing material. And in their words, a durable high density foam, some stretchy black fabric and a bunch of staples. Definitely pretty basic. The bottom or seat cushion is about two inches or 50 millimeters thick and the back cushion is about one inch or 25 millimeters thick. When we focus on the adjustability of the Spectre Carbon, we can start looking at the pedal set. There are actually eight different pedal positions or rakes to choose from, starting out at about 10 degrees at the lowest or flattest point, and then up to about 45 or 50 degrees at their most lean towards the driver. The pedal assembly can then be mounted in at least 10 different setbacks from the wheel deck. This ends up being about eight and a quarter inches or 21 millimeters of adjustment there. The seat back has three different angles to choose from. They're set in five degree increments from 65, 70, and 75 degrees from the floor. The seat bottom also has three positions of 15, 20, and 25 degrees from the floor to secure the seat in. Like the pedal structure, we can adjust or mount the seat back relative to the center section in a dozen or so positions, giving you eight and a half inches or 21 and a half centimeters of seat distance adjustability. And then the final adjustment is the wheel deck, which can be mounted in seven different positions. For me, there were really only two positions to choose from that were realistic and that was flat or 15 degrees of rake. 
In the end, I was able to get a perfect distance from my seat to the pedals, along with the perfect angle. I was also able to get the perfect seat to wheel distance, and I was very comfortable with it at a 15 degree recline, but I would have liked to be able to mount the wheel higher. The final driving position is a very upright F1 position. What do I mean by that? I mean, you are in a typical Formula One position in that your pedals are at the same height as your butt, or in some cases, your pedals might end up even being higher than your butt, but your seat back is still very pushed up versus a more reclined angle with the wheel up here that you'd see from an F1 driver. So it's sort of a combination of a GT back and wheel position with a Formula One butt and foot position. So it is a little unique or a little bit of an odd driving position for me. So with the Spectre Carbon all built with our gear installed and it finally tuned to get us as comfortable as we're gonna be in the chassis, it is time to get out on track and see how it does out on track driving. And that really starts with getting in and out of the rig. Now I mentioned the rig is low. The rig is very low to the ground and that presents our first challenge, just getting in and out. The second challenge is that it is a tight entry, trying to get your legs in underneath the wheel and wheel deck without scraping a shin bone or bumping a knee on the edge. This is like climbing into a real race car and having to really watch yourself a bit each time. The same is true each time getting out of the chassis as well. Once you learn the way in and out, it gets easier, but watch those knees your first few times. As we mentioned in the fitting sections of the review, I did get myself rather comfortable with all of my equipment in pretty good position. My only complaint was the wheel deck height, but everything else should end up pretty close to perfect. The wheel deck itself proved to be very strong. I ran a Thrustmaster TSXW, which is a well-suited wheel for the rig. There was no hint of wobble, no flex, no twist, or any other motion out of the chassis. No, I didn't go mounting a direct drive to the chassis because honestly, I don't think that is the Spectre Carbon's market. If one did try, I think the chassis is technically strong enough for it, but there could be a scenario where the wheel deck popped up off its wedge locks in extreme direct drive moments. Again, not the intended racer. The pedal deck was even stronger as we are pushing down on the hardware and under braking, there was no movement whatsoever. There was no flex. There was no knocking or wiggles. It was rock solid. I think this pedal deck is strong enough for some pretty heavy duty pedals with load cells included on the list. Now the seat was an area that I had concern about. Its bottom is very short from front to back or under your butt, which turned out to be okay. Again, hitting that minimalistic approach. Any less, it would just not be enough. However, it worked. I was fairly comfortable when driving, despite its lack of enough recline, despite its complete flat back, and despite its relatively thin cushions, I was surprised at how comfortable the chassis was when driving. So with all that said, the driving experience in the Spectre Carbon was pretty good. The advantage of your hardware being where it needs to be is that it always adds to the overall comfort of driving the rig. The one thing we still haven't covered are the little tables or what I like to call the bat wings. And I will admit I have a love hate relationship with these extra little tables. And that's because when walking by, I actually tripped over one of these and it knocked it right off the rig and caused a little bit of damage to the rig, to the wood. It wasn't a big deal. I was able to put it right back on, but I do consider them to be slightly fragile. They're not supported on both sides. They're really only supported by that leg and their connection to the chassis, which leaves them somewhat vulnerable. So when sliding the rig around, I would take a little extra care. That also takes me to the concept of using a shifter on those little tables. Now, for me, using a heavy duty shifter, that's completely out of the question. It would just pop the table right off the chassis. However, for people with a Thrustmaster or a Logitech shifter, I think you'd be okay. I didn't have one here to test it, but I think under normal use with a lighter shifter, you're gonna be okay, but no heavy duty shifters, not even really realistically a Fanatic shifter. So one other great feature of the Spectre Carbon is it's ease to put it away. And there are three different ways to do that. Number one, 
you can just flip it up onto its back and slide it into a corner. Wow, that is much less space. Or you could remove eight bolts and slide the three sections together in as small as packages can be. Not bad, a bit less space. Or you could break it down, stack the pieces, and stick the whole thing in a closet or under a bed. Totally gone. And at about 48 pounds or 22 kilograms, it's not that hard to do. And outside of a wheel stand, I don't know any SIM chassis that can be put away that easily. So I think that pretty much tells you everything you need to know about the Spectre Carbon Racing Cockpit. But let's go ahead and make things easy and break it down with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line, starting off with the good. And that being, it's a very inexpensive for a full chassis. Easy to build. Very strong. No wheel deck wobble. No pedal deck flex. Pre-drilled for common gear. Adjustable pedals, wheel deck, and seat angle. Adjustable fits drivers four foot ten up to six foot five. Easy to pack or store. Bonus side tables, mouse, keyboard, shifter. And now on to the not so good. The Spectre Carbon does have some slightly rough edges where your hands come in contact with it. No feet, no adjustment for uneven floors, harder to slide. Side tables, fragile. Very low to the ground. Tight entry, tough getting in and out. Would like higher wheel deck adjustment. Would like more seat back adjustment. And now on to my final thoughts. The Spectre Carbon Racing Cockpit truly is the IKEA of racing cockpits. I mean, look at so many different aspects of it. The MDF style, the cutouts, the leftover holes that you're not using in the construction, and most of all, the wedge lock design. And don't lose any of this hardware because you will be missing it just like an IKEA piece. You miss one piece of this hardware and you're kind of out of luck because it doesn't come in with any extra hardware. Now, realistically, I feel that this is truly designed for a beginner sim racer, somebody newer to the industry, somebody just getting in it, into it, somebody who's maybe transferring from a desktop or a wheel stand and on a tight budget. It is, if not the least expensive, one of the least expensive chassis. It might be for the part-time sim racer, somebody who dabbles in our sport a little bit, wants to be able to play, wants to be able to put it away when they're not. Maybe they're gonna take a season off or a few months off, but wanna get back to it again. This is the perfect type of chassis for that type of driver. And despite the minimalistic seat design, I was really concerned these cushions weren't gonna provide enough support, but I was surprisingly comfortable in the chassis. The other thing I just can't leave alone is the low to the ground really keeps it in that younger market. I don't think a lot of old guys are gonna wanna climb down into the ground and that strange tight entry, that strange always having to watch out for your knees approach to getting into a rig is always gonna be a little bothersome, but maybe that's due to age as well. I think this is gonna work a little bit better for the younger audience. And I know I gave him a little bit of a hard time for the bat wings because I tripped over one. Maybe I'm a little embarrassed, but I do like having the functionality and being able to keep my keyboard and mouse right there on the rig. And when I consider again at that price point, getting bonuses at all is a really nice advantage. And it is very low, which means that monitors could also be an issue depending on who the end user is. I think for us, we actually have our television on one of those old school stands down on the ground, not way up high on the wall. And it would work really well for a console racer on a lower TV. And that could be actually the perfect end user right there as well. So in the end, I think the Spectre Carbon did a good job of making a rig for their market. What do I mean by that? Obviously, this is not a rig designed for the hardcore sim racer with a direct drive wheel and thousands of dollars in all of their equipment. It's not the rig intended for that user. 
it really is intended for the newer sim racer, probably for the younger sim racer, a little more agile, getting in and out and dealing with the low driving position. I think it's gonna be perfect for them. Chances are that guy probably doesn't have a lot of space and being able to tilt it out of the way is gonna be another pro for that type of driver. So again, I think they really hit their market for the client that the rig is intended for. And I think I've done a good job of telling you what that's all about. So I hope I did tell you everything that you need to know. If you wanna check it out for yourself, go to specterform.com and they do offer free shipping to the continental US. So I hope you've enjoyed this review. I hope I've told you everything that you need to know about the Specter Carbon Racing Cockpit. And be sure to subscribe to this channel so you find out when we have a new review coming out. That's going to do it for this one. This is the Simpit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.